In a quiet town in the 17th century France lived a man named Thierry de Fermat, a brilliant lawyer by the day but a secret mathematician by the night. When others slept, Fermat solved puzzles. When others wrote letters, Fermat wrote conjectures. He was basically the kind of a guy who would solve a J.E. advance problem even in the back of a bus ticket just for fun. One evening, Fermat was reading an ancient Greek maths book, Arithmetica. He came across the equation that we all know, a square plus b square is equal to c square. Ah, Pythagoras, he smiled. Nice fellow. Then his mathematician brain whispered, what if we try the same thing but with cubes? or with the 4th powers or any number bigger than 2. He tested few numbers by the way, but it didn't work. He tested few more, but still it didn't work. Then he made a bold statement. I think this never works for any power bigger than 2. He grabbed a quill, leaned over the margin of a book and scribbled. I have discovered a truly marvelous proof of this, but this margin is too small to contain it. And then he closed the book. The end. For Fermat, yes, it was the end, but for the mathematical world, it was the beginning of a 350-year headache. Yes, headache, you heard it right. Margin too small? Fermat, you had the whole world. Why didn't you write the proof somewhere else? Why? 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 But the proof was nowhere to be found. Some thought maybe he lost it. Maybe he forgot it. Maybe his cat ate it. <laughs> or maybe he never had one. But mathematicians are stubborn creatures as you all know. They began the chase. Leonard Euler got the proof for n equal to 3. Fermat himself gave the proof for n equal to 4. Lejeune and Dirichlet gave the proof for n equal to 5. Lame gave the proof for n equal to 7. Bit by bit, they captured some exponents, but proving it for all n greater than 2 seemed to be impossible. It was the Mount Everest of mathematics. Now, cut to 1963, a 10-year-old boy named Andrew Wills was exploring a library in Cambridge. He read about the Fermat's last theorem and his reaction was, hey, this looks easy, I can solve this. Well, every mathematician had said this once in their life, but unlike others, Wills did not give up. He didn't even tell people. So he worked in complete secrecy. Seven years alone, no noise, no social media, just equations, coffee, and that unshakable dream to solve that question. In 1994, Andrew Wills finally announced he had proven the theorem. The world exploded. Newspapers screamed. Mathematicians cried. The ghost of Fermat somewhere probably smiled. The 350-year-old mathematical problem was finally solved. His proofs spanned into hundreds of pages using mathematics that didn't even exist in Fermat's time. Which makes us wonder, did Fermat really have the proof for this? Or was he simply flexing? Well, we will never know the answer for this, but the story of Fermat's last theorem will forever be mathematics' greatest love story with a single sentence scribbled somewhere in the margin of a book.